Moving on to our next interesting session, Sanjeev Azad, APAC Technology Head, Global Logic, and Amit Sood, Principal Architect, Global Logic, are all set to deliver a compelling presentation on sustainable product engineering, crafting a greener tomorrow. Join us as they delve into real-time demonstrations that highlight how our innovations and technological solutions are primed to shape a more environmentally conscious future. I, it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Sanjeev Azad and Mr. Amit Sood on the stage. Hello. Fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay. I thought after lunch it's very hard. It's a hard job to keep people awake. But the good part is that, you know, we have our second session after lunch. So that means uh, we will have some active participation. Oh, third? Oh, thank you so much. And the second point, actually, because we, we are starting our session 20 minutes late, so we will get 20 minutes complete, right? Thank you. OK, so, uh, so today's session, like ma'am said that, you know, it's a very interesting topic. And we, we, we were hearing about the robotic. We were talking about the, uh, the uh, from Sir, like uh, quantum computer, right? Uh, it is also important that, you know, though we are talking about a lot of advanced technologies, but what about the uh, sustainability, right? Uh, hardware side, yes, we are doing good job. Uh, but what about the software? Who is going to teach my developer, you know, write the efficient code, right? And that is one of the biggest problem we have. So today, we will try to cover with, with me, uh, Amit, uh, we will cover the topic. And also, we will try to make it more interactive. Because pre presentation asks for, for boring stuff. We will try to minimize the presentations and have more coding stuff uh, so that uh, we will have some real stuff in action. Amit, go to the next slide. Uh, now, if you see that, right, the, uh, for the last couple of years, we keep hearing uh, technologies like Generative AI, Metaverse, Web3. There are a whole bunch of technologies are coming up, right? Uh, and, and, and Genetive AI actually become uh, popular after ChatGPT. In fact, my son uh, is using ChatGPT to complete their homework. So they are not getting any, uh, you know, stuff. Uh, so, but the, the point is that because these technologies are coming very fast, right, these are disturbing uh, every business. Because if it is impacting at the family level, now you can think of every business is now talking about that, how they're going to transform. If you click on that, uh, go to the next slide, Amit. Uh, now you see that, and that's what, Okay, it's good stuff because uh, the businesses are transforming. Uh, that means we are building more stuff. We are building more uh, digital solutions altogether. That means we are uh, consuming more energy as well. And these and uh, the uh, the uh, the why these energies are consumption because we are building software. We are building software. We are playing with the hardware, and that is the reason that you know uh, uh, the 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 code that we are writing, whether that is energy efficient or not, right? So that is where, if you go to the next slide, <clears throat> so if you see that, right, how the, uh, the digital technologies are contributing to the carbon emission, especially into the, uh, uh, the green, uh, greenhouse gases, is that like it was 4% in 2020, and now it is reaching out to 8%. Now, because think of it quantum computer, think about generative AI, it can keep increasing altogether, right? So that's what it is very, very important. Uh, it, it is very important for us to know that, you know, how as a developer, how as a technology leader, we can, uh, we can start thinking to write the, uh, the energy efficient code uh, and look into the next one. So it's not a choice now. It's, it's, it's a time for us to think about that, what are the code we are writing. They are energy efficient. And we have the right KPI to measure the carbon emission that we are building all together. And that is where, uh, this is where we have started this uh, initiative in our, in our company to make sure that every developer is educated enough to select the right algorithm to select the right technologies, and also to make sure that they are uh, building the right solutions for that. If you go to the next slide, now it's come to what are the areas typically, uh, if we talk about the green energy and all the stuff, right? Uh, we have categorized into three buckets. One is the competition side. Uh, the very first thing is the archetypes, right? I think someone was talking about the serverless architecture and also, right? So many of you may have seen that, or maybe you have observed that, right? Uh, People are coming to us, they provision a VM uh, just for the sake of they, they want to do some innovation, but that's a one-off case and they keep their VMs running, right? 
but many times these are unused kind of compute lying down and nobody no, nobody's taking care of that right and that is happening everywhere this is a kind of spend this is a kind of waste everywhere instead of going with the vm why can't i have a serverless computing for example right that is one example right that is one area second on the algorithm so there are several ways to uh, to implement or to solve the one problem and that is where are we choosing the right algorithm or not that is another way of looking into third is that the fit for purpose right so take an example though we are talking about generative ai uh, ai ml machine learning everything right and many of us are using python drastically and now if you see the python versus c sharp or maybe other language right you see that the energy is consumed by the python is pretty high and there are some statistics available on the internet you can go and search for that so every programming has some some right so while as an architect or as a developer i need to make a choice you know what technology i'm using or maybe let's say mysql versus no sql db everyone is using the mongo db for example right but mongo db may not be the right choice if you are doing with the relational database for example so these are very very small picky things but it is very very important that you know uh, typically in hindi we call like boon boon se sagar batta for example right that's exactly the same thing i'm trying to convey over there the second is the competition and the data management so uh, first start with the uh, let's say it's called rebound effect uh, initial days you know we talk about one computer at home and now we talk about 20 computers at home right every year we have a lot of devices and that's called the rebound because the, because the technology is getting so accessible to me so cheap to me i am actually increasing the scope and the adoption of it the second area is the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, bitcoins is example right so if you see if you heard about that the the compute and energy spent by the bitcoin servers the the minting is happening it's it's huge right so that's what the another area volumetric data transfer and this is a very classic example you might go to any website and you search for that and if you if you are uh, interesting into the how much data is transferred between the computers for example right while transferring uh, inst instead of we want to know some website uh, to know something from the website actually we get to know they are they are knowing us right so they are like, collecting lot of data through uh, uh, i uh, know uh, the uh, click analyticals and their different ways they are collecting load right and the data storage and archive we keep collecting because we are so passionate about collecting the data and our developers our architect says okay i let me collect each and everything i will do something 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 and over a period of time that data becomes stale and and we are using nothing so how many times actually you go back to our systems or the data collections that we have are we making the right use of it these are very uh, most common i would say the common stuff uh but you uh, you know that you know it's called the dark data by the way so this is a term i'm using and the last but not the least in the uh, the operating system we are using right i think most of us uh, most of us we are using uh, windows as well but windows operating system versus the linux operating system right there's a huge difference what kind of frameworks we are using that also depends uh, uh, it, it depends actually how much energy we are we are spending on that one so considering all this factor i will not go into detail but uh, the the main point is that uh, three areas we have taken uh, in global logic we have taken initiative one is the captain code greenify we make it the name like so that it is uh, it look uh, you know uh, interesting for our developers as well so you keep writing your code but at the end of the day it scans your code and identified what are the pattern you have applied in fact if you use the copilot for example to writing your code for example right and copilot will give you the the data right no and you know that you know a fool with this uh, tool still a fool right so even you write a code then dr Co uh, this captain code greenify will scan your code and suggest you what is the right language what is the right algorithm you should write so that which is more efficient and i will show uh, i will amit will show you the demo as well second is a green mover so this is another initiative we are working uh, with one of our customer where we have uh, uh, to promote the green initiative take an example uh in india i'm not talking about the india specifically but i'm talking about the overall uh for uh, the uh, decongestion on the let's say airports or maybe in the in the station for example right so let's take example my office is five station away from my home right and i need to uh, go to office every day i'm going that right so instead of going to the uh, uh, taking uh, dropping at the station five i drop at station four and now i am taking a walk from station 4 to my office because number one i am actually making awareness for my health because walking is good for health second is that you know now actually i am minimizing reducing the 
the crowd on session five so that you know I can I can manage that the uh, you know uh, the, uh, uh, the, the decongestion at uh, and level five. So that is a kind of initiative, and and in return that uh, the uh, the the employees or so the people will will get some rewards, uh, green rewards in terms of so they will they will also feel that they are contributing back to the society altogether. And in addition to that, we have a setting up a kind of our I would say is a living lab so that we can keep innovating new ideas into the sustainability. And that's what uh, we are we are talking about. So now for today's session, uh, because I was told that you know the audience is very techy and all the stuff, so we try to make it more interactive and we have a demo. So we'll show you the uh, the code greenify demo. Amit, over to you. Is this on? Not working. I don't think so. Is this on? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Sanjeev. Uh, as Sanjeev mentioned that. Uh, Sustainability is, is still a thing of theory, and how do we achieve that as architects or leaders in this room? How do we achieve that on the ground level? How do we teach our architects, developers, you know, to think in sustainability? Uh, consider when you are writing code, think of sustainability. How can we achieve that? So, if you are an architect or a leader in an organization and designing application, you know, we are considering microservices and architecture for a lot of things without having any consideration of sustainability. We are considering microservices architecture because it's cool, it's small, uh, there is performance benefits, but we have no regards to sustainability for the simple reason because we d just do not understand what we will get out of it as per, as per the sustainability. What we get is, what we think is that improving performance, increase sustainability, but that's not the case. I can throw in more hardware that will increase my performance, that does not guarantee sustainability. So as architects, we have to think small when we are writing or, or designing our uh, code. That's one of the reasons why we use microservices. So creating a monolith architecture, you're putting a lot of effort that would, uh, on a machine, that would need a lot of compute powers, GPU cycles for it to execute. Smaller the code, the smaller the memory footprint, the smaller the energy footprint as well. L consider lazy loading. We all we all know what it is. We all have worked with it, but again, we do not know what is the sustainability impact of lazy loading when we are designing applications like this. Again, performance does not mean sustainable code. Similarly, algorithm efficiency. Uh, Sanjeev talked about that. You know, how can I use the right uh, patterns, algorithms, built-in functions? And when I get to the demo, I'll give you a, a showcase of that as well. But think in terms of how can you reduce your CPU cycles. CPU cycles, redu reduction in CPU cycle basically in terms means lower memory footprints, lower energy footprints as well. Use more and more caching mechanism. Obviously it gives you the performance boost and the speed boost in your application, but it gives you uh, lower trips to your databases, lower network trips, all of that results in saving of energies. And of course it uh, saves performance as well. Efficiency on networking when you are transferring data, you know, we all have been using JSON because we believe uh, it is faster and that is the case as well. But in a lot of sectors like banking, you know, old softwares that have not been changed, we are still working with XML. We are still transferring XML. XML has a massive footprint when it comes to network, uh, network transfer of your data. So consider, you know, lower footprint uh, data packets when you are designing your application. In terms of UI efficiency, we all know that, that lady lo uh, lazy loading work. We all know that we don't have to, you know, uh, load everything in one go, and that's that's the case as well when you are doing that. It not only gives you performance boost, it gives you sustainable boost. Well. So load on demand. If there are images, we know why to use CDNs because that will give us performance boost, but that will obviously gives you more sustainable uh, code as well. So with that, let me switch to the demo. Can you see this? You can visit our booth and get the experience as well by the way. Okay. I'm still on? You need to drag that. You need to drag that uh, window. Okay. So this is uh, Captain Good Greenify, as uh, Sanjeev talked about. What I've got today for you is a few examples, pretty basic examples. Uh, but the idea is to showcase, you know, how much a one line of code can impact uh, sustainability. 
So first example I've got here is a simple list concatenation. We have all seen this kind of code, you know. Uh, we have all done things like plus equal to. I am pretty certain if you go back to your developers today and ask them to find out this code, you will find it in your softwares. I can 100% guarantee you that. We are not taught in our universities or when we are, you know, writing code of what is the impact of this single uh, uh, sign here. How many CP, CP cycles is this consuming? We have no regards of sustainability when, when we are writing up our codes. We are concerned about the performance, but as I said, I can throw in more hardware and I can deal with the performance part, but that does not mean sustainability. If you look at the CPU cycles at the bottom, this small piece of code is getting a close to 19,000 CPU cycles. How much is 90,000? We don't know whether this is a good or bad. Let me show you an analyzed version of this code. So exactly the same code uh, in terms of what it does, but here we are using an inbuilt function called joins. Simple list concatenation function gives you the exactly same output, but notice the CPU cycles. It is less than 50% of what I was doing there. You know, very small thing, single line of code, but we are just, we just do not know what is the impact when we are writing this code. For sure, a lot of us are using dot join function in our code, but we still are not educated to know what is the impact on sustainability here. So that's the, that's the message I try and try to give here that every time you're writing code, consider sustainability as a factor in it. Another example of the code <coughs> is, is recursions. You know, we have all done uh, Fibonacci examples. We do this in our code in different ways a lot. You know, the simple, you know, four lines of code is is basically consuming 40,000 CPU cycles. We have no clue, again, how big or what is the CO2 footprint of that. In fact, when we are writing the, writing the code, when we are doing code reviews, our uh, tools which are doing static code analysis, they do not even consider CPU cycles. All we are considering is which, that my code should run and my performance should be good enough. So let me give you an equivalent of this considering sustainability. Exactly the same code in terms of what it will give you as an output, but notice the CPU cycle. Again, half of what I was doing on the left-hand side. You know, with this, the message I want you to take back to your organization as leaders, what you should do, you know, you teach your developers, bake this into your, you know, sof software development life cycles of consider sustainability when they are writing code, you know, generative AI is enabling these today. We can use generative AI, you know, functions like chat GPT, they can easily give you analysis of your code, tell you the memory footprints of that. You can bake that into your, you know, uh, life cycles of uh, software development and consider, start considering sustainability. Hardware is one piece of it. Uh, for sure, there are a lot of uh, cloud vendors who are considering, you know, green storage, uh, green cloud, all of that is available, but as developers, now, as the small it, smallest unit in the organization when we are coding, we should consider sustainability. As well. Yeah. So the idea is that, you know, these are few, just a couple of examples, but think of it, if we are writing a billion line of code because of generative AI and everything, right? That impact will be huge, right? So again, boon uh, boon se sagar bhagta, right? So that exactly, right? So that's what we need to, first of all, we need to make awareness then we need to educate our developer community. And then finally, because that will become, uh, and, and also I highly recommend that whatever the software we're building, just try to identify how we can make sure that, you know, we have a sustainability factor into it. And that's what it will become a, uh, become a de facto standard for us to adapt, right? So again, this is, a, this is the initiative uh, no individual can do. It's a community. Uh, we all need to work together to make sure that for our greener future as well. So having said that, thank you so much. And if you have any question, we are more than happy to take that question. Uh, not now, but we can share our findings to that, and hopefully we will be uh, public uh, outsource this one. Sorry, the uh, the open source this one. Uh, this uh, Captain Code Greenify. But soon. inside Global Logic, it is. Yeah, in in Global Logic, we have yes. Any questions? Please feel free to ask. Yes, please. Sonar Cube is a Sonar Cube is a platform which has a set of rules, so you can feed in more rules together. They are talking about your code quality. 
but one of the uh, the energy efficiency something is missing over there as well so take an example if you see this code right they say okay they will give okay this is the right code logically it's correct technically it's correct but and works well but are we talking about the energy efficiency or not and that is where we don't have that kind of awareness and knowledge together yeah You know, uh, as I said, you know, a fool with a tool is still a fool, right? Mm -hmm. So, Git Copilot is very, very powerful. But to write the, uh, the to ask the right question to Copilot is a, is a big difference, right? Our, our developers are smart enough to write the right prompt for that. And that is where the difference. So, prompt engineering is another area I highly recommend to start learning, for example. And that's where we want to make sure that our developers are smart enough to ask the right question to these kind of technologies. So typically, that's what we have a right combo between the uh, machines and the, the, the human. Machine, let the machines do the repetitive work, but let the human do a creativity and make sure, validate what are the machines are producing. But, but in Copilot also, we have a prompting feature, right? We can always prompt and then get a We have? We have the prompt feature also, right? Yes, that is that is what I'm saying. If you ask GP, uh, the Copilot to write an array function, it will do the right. But that array function, like as, as Fibo Nikki said that, Amit shows that, which one actually it produce? That is where we need to play, say, that we need to, we need to start learning altogether. Because there are so many algorithms are there, right? Yeah, we are up on time. So for any further question, guys, we are right here. Thank you. We are talking about the so estimated much. CPU cycles. We are almost on the dot here. Maybe we can take last question. Bro. So the estimated CPU cycles means, does it also mean that the execution will be fast? And not just the saving of energy, but actually execution will be faster. Because the number of CPU cycles is higher, that means you have more green gas, uh, greenhouse gases, right? More carbon emission, for example. And also, it takes more more time to execute so many CPU cycles. So uh, it may it may reduce as well. It, it may reduce the time as well as the the uh, the carbon emission as it well. It may reduce or to hundred percent reduce. It will reduce by half. So in this case, it will reduce by half. Eighteen thousand becomes. So these are some of the examples, but it's a case too because if we have billion lines of code, think of it, right? So there are so many patterns that are applied. That's where the, we have some formulas. I think you can also explore CO2, uh, CO2.js. That actually you can apply to your software and then it can produce that result for you. And we can have an offline discussion by the way. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so, you so much, Sanjeev and Amit. I would just request you to stay here. And I will now request Rajiv Narula, Solution Consulting Head, North, ServiceNow, to come and felicitate you for this very insightful session. Big round of applause, guys. Thank you, thank you so much.